If you want to get into podcasting, forget Zoom. That is not the way to go. You definitely want to try Zencaster. If you know me, you know I'm obsessed with quality. And so it's incredibly important to me. And, you know, not all of my guests are tech savvy. They don't all have the best internet connection. Zencaster is able to solve all of those problems with their really innovative platform. If you go to Zencaster.com and use promo code Holly, you will get the first three months for 30% off. That's Zencaster.com and use promo code Holly to take advantage of this incredible offer today. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. I, for one, am super excited to be here because I had to take last week off. Some of you may have noticed that I did a re-release of my episode with my parents, and this is because I got COVID. Um, I'm fine. I had a very mild case thanks to being vaccinated, but being quarantined was a bummer. And so I'm so excited to be back here with you guys and back here with my very special guest who I'm going to introduce to you in just a second. But first I want to give a shout out to my sponsors, Adam and Eve. If you go to adameve.com and use code Holly, you get 10 free gifts plus free shipping with your purchase. And Adam Eve is such a great website because they literally have everything sexy that you could ever want. They have lingerie, they have toys, they have games, they have DVDs it's like a one-stop shop. So definitely check them out at amoeve.com. Make sure you use code Holly for your special offer. I also just want to quickly mention to those of you who don't watch all the way to the end about my Patreon, where you can access live streams, early releases, you get merchandise like shirts, hoodies, mugs, stickers, um, bonus content, access to my fine art photography, there's so much stuff there. So make sure you go check me out at patreon.com slash Holly Randall unfiltered, where you will be able to access an early release episode with my amazing guest today, who is Sophie Anderson coming all the way from the UK. Sophie, thank you so much for being here. Ah, hey, woo! <laughs> and I just want to say, Hey, my wonderful guys and girlies and my non-binary friends. So hello everyone <laughs> and hi Holly. I'm so glad that you're better now. I am so happy Thank you're you. better. Oh my goodness. And how are you feeling, boo? Um, I, you know, I'm fine. I, I still have a little bit of a head cold. I still have no say, sense of taste or smell. Um, so... I'm probably a little bit slower mentally than I would normally be. Um, So if I sound like an idiot in this interview, there's my excuse. (laughs) But otherwise, I'm fine. (laughs) Oh, Oh, bless you. But you sound absolutely great. You're looking gorge, babe. Gorge. (laughs) Thank you. Well, I can't tell you how excited I was to, like, put on makeup this morning and, like, do my hair and actually have a reason to, like... You know, I was just stuck in my house. So so it's it's nice to feel part of society again. Oh, that's so good. That is so good. Because I, I know when we're all in lockdown, it was like, you know, when you're stuck in your house and you're like, oh, my goodness. I just, I was actually thinking about this the other day, actually. The fact that, oh, my God, I remember when it's like, we couldn't just go out and fuck. It's just like no. we were kept in our houses and it's like, Oh my goodness, we can't go out and go and go and shag anyone or go and exercise or go and do like all the normal things. So bless you, Bay. I I oh my goodness. I was just, you know, I was only thinking about that this morning and I thought, oh my goodness, I can't even imagine going back to like being so restricted again, you know? Um yeah. and uh because I, you know. As soon as like everything was lifted here, I was like, "Oh my goodness, where's where's the cock and pussy?" You know, <laughs> where back, is back it? Back to business. <laughs> I'm, like, Just... I'm here, are you. I come here, and I, honestly, I was so like that. As soon as it was lifted, I was like, "This like like sex demon was like." <laughs> 
<laughs> Calm down, Soph, you know? No, seriously, it was it was like that. <laughs> so how did you how did you manage quarantine then? I mean, oh. it sounds like I mean you're you're obviously a very extroverted person. Um oh, so how did you manage being like locked in your house for that long? Let's just say that my do- my doxy was used a lot. Um, locked in my little bedroom. I was like, right, okay, so it would be this kind of routine that I get into. So it'd be like, right, I'm gonna have a little play in the morning to get that release. Right, cool, cool. And then by the afternoon, you're either at your fridge eating, or I'm like, yeah, right, get it back on there. <laughs> get it back on that clip. Right, okay. I'm okay again. So it must have been like a routine of like having having a, like a girly wank. Going to the fridge and eating, right? Okay, watching a watching a bit of TV, or uh, you know, or doing some skypes on the sofa with some guys. Oh, right, and then back into the routine, right? Back on the vibrator, food, and it was kind of like that. No wonder I put on so much weight during during them because, like, it was either wanking or eating. So. <laughs> So then, so you obviously have this very like big personality online. And a lot of times like people will have this, you know, uh, celebrities like yourself will have this, this certain personality online and there'll be somebody else at home. Are you the same person at home as you are like for your work and on social media? This is so true. And I tell you why it's because I show both sides of me. Um, so the fact is, I, you know, I really, really care about people. I care about how they feel inside. And and that is that is the loving part of me, um, of Sophie. And, you know, I put my little caring videos out online. You know, if I'm kind of feeling a certain way. Um, like, in fact, I, um, I literally, I, I've had a, I went into hospital uh, on Sunday night because I had a boob infection. I had sepsis and it's still a little bit red now. Um, and so then I put that online and I was like, oh, do you know what? You've got to make sure you take care of yourself. So the kind of things that happened to me, I then put these videos out online. So, and it's because I really care about people. And I think, God, if I can show that side of me, the loving and caring side, as well as the soap that you see that is like this kind of like, you know, this ball of energy of like sexual energy. I, I, that's why I show both sides of me because I think, do you know what? I have that two sides and that could be due to kind of my um very manic, manic kind of personality and manic kind of uh, phases that I go through. It's either one side or the other, I must admit. Um, but I like to show both sides of me. So I'm very, very fortunate in that I could just totally be myself online. Like there isn't anything that's false. Like literally, <laughs> literally, my son will sometimes say, "Right, mum," because he's a bit cut. Cal- he's very calm, you see, and he's like, "Right, mum, mm-hmm. you need to calm down a bit." you know and I'm like okay yeah sorry <laughs> so so yeah and it's so I'm very like I said I'm very very fortunate that I can show both sides of me um again that very loving caring side and that kind of sexual like you know rah, and the kind of like manic so so yeah yeah I I definitely think that I don't hide anything I don't I kind of hide any parts of my personality um but like I said I'm very very fortunate that I don't kind of have to fake it at all like anyone who sees me when I'm out as well um especially especially people in the um LGBTQ community um whenever I see anyone out and they want a picture they're like oh my god you're actually the same person online I'm like yeah I so am because this is just me and I and I don't really think there's any need for me to fake it to be honest with you so I'm very like I said very fortunate in that way I think that that's um, probably a big part of your draw. And I think that's been the gift of social media and these personal content platforms that we talk about so much, OnlyFans and and all of that, because it's enabled creators to connect directly with their fans. And, you know, you're no longer only being showcased through a distributor of a DVD line or on the pages of a magazine. You get to be your true authentic self or or be whoever you want to be to your fans. And I think that they really pick up on that. So 
Um, what do you think about social media like overall? Um, you know, it's such a huge driving force in our society today. Do you think that it's, it's good for us? Do you think it's bad for us? Do you think it's a mixed bag? Like what are the positives and negatives? Wow. That is, that is so, so good. Do you know what? It, it is a, obviously I use it mainly as, like I said, to show my personality because Oh, do you know what I really think? Especially in the porn industry, anyone can be a fuckhole. Especially, especially for women as well. Anybody can, you know, use their body for sex online, and it's it's very very easy to do that. It really is. It you know you don't have to not like um you know doing escorting or anything like that. It's very very easy to kind of make money online um and using your body in a very sexual way. So it's very very easy to do that. However, I find it's um you know for me as well. I've had to find that kind of um something unique. Um, because like I said, anyone anyone can um, be part of porn. It doesn't now because with OnlyFans and everything like that, anyone can do it. And how great is that? Like make money. It also means there's a lot more competition. So you have to go right. What is my thing? How can I make myself, you know, a bit more different? How can I draw people into me? And I felt that I've kind of done that. One, because I I genuinely, genuinely love what I do. I, I love sex. I love being part of such a great community, the porn industry, and especially the gay community and the LGBT community, the trans community as well. So I'm very, very lucky that I've been accepted in different communities. Um, so for me, um, there it has been downsides as well so the upside is is that i've been welcomed into, into all these communities like i said especially when me and rebecca were together in the as the cop destroyers we were very very lucky we were drawn and 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 we were accepted in all the different communities and we we were pushing towards and we still are but separately is pushing towards making um, people in the sex industry and the porn industry more mainstream and being able to get out there and do exactly what we want to do because there's always been this boundary between people in the sex industry or the porn industry and mainstream it's very very hard it's very very hard and if you kind of want to make it you've got to have that little thing so I've kind of done that myself through my, just through my own personality um and also because of the filth <laughs> I don't think every sometimes when I do videos online they're like oh my god so that was a bit much but that's just me and I love what I do I love the filth I love sex I love it all being filthy and dirty I love like taboo so I I really kind of like and I, and I put it out there I really love like doing like messy messy stuff that's like squashing water sports hard sports you know vomit play I really enjoy that then it for me as well it was using cosplay, so like bringing out different characters, and me and my partner now, Damien, that's exactly what we're doing. Um, so we do like lots and lots of cosplay where we stay in character throughout the whole sex scene rather than it just kind of being more of a cosplay and then you just do the sex scene so we just kind of incorporate that into our own characters because we really enjoy acting so in in a positive way I'm very lucky that I kind of found that that little niche of mine that little thing that makes me a bit different um however there can be downsides in the fact that if you are that little bit different um people don't particularly like it they you know I've had my social medias kind of I've had Instagram taken down again and again um I've had my only fans now taken away um because they've changed their rules and regulations on there so I can't do the filthy stuff that I want to do on there um so I tried setting up a website um and that didn't particularly work because um Basically, most of the people online are very, very um, 
kind of, I would say, um, not particularly stuck in their ways, but OnlyFans is very easy to go on to and people know how to use it. Whereas like the website I was using, um, it was a bit more difficult. If you signed up, sometimes it crashed. So I've had to kind of like go back onto OnlyFans, but it being... <sighs> I have to kind of had to hold myself back a bit and kind of stick with their rules, which of course I don't particularly like because I like to rebel a bit, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so yeah, so it can be very difficult because obviously as well things are changing. I've noticed with Twitter as well. I've got some kind of block on there at the moment. I've been kind of shadow banned and I think there's another restriction on there. So even though I've noticed that my followers have been going up about 100 a day, on Twitter it seems to actually have gone down. Now, I don't know why that is. There's some sort of shadow ban or block on there. And I really think that's because all these social media platforms are trying to stop sex workers, are trying to stop people in porn industry, to try and stop us making money. And I think it's really, really wrong. Um, so you've got to try and find different avenues then. So myself and Damien have now started um, our YouTube channel, The Fucking Explorers. And well, the reason why we're doing that is because we realise, not only because we, we really want to, the thing is, if we want to go more into mainstream, um, not only that, but because we realise that these platforms are going to be squeezing tighter and tighter and tighter on sex positivity at people in the porn industry and people in the sex industry, which I think is very, very wrong but myself, I think we need to be expressing more about sex positivity, about it being sex is a real positive thing. You know, as you get older as well, it makes you feel good. It's, it's great to experience that with different people. We should be keeping sex workers safe and not driving us underground. And we should be able to promote what we want to promote. Um, so social media, so let's just put it in a box. I know I know I blabber on, but social media can be very positive, um, but can be, you know, very tight as well, especially if you're in the sex industry or porn industry. Um I see what you're saying. Cause it's like, yeah, it's like social media is like on one hand, the po- I think what you're saying, the positive aspects is it's allowed you to put yourself out there, it's allowed you, you to it. be your you authentic it, self. Yeah. And then on the negative side, the tighter restrictions that we're seeing right now is now kind of squashing you. So it's like, it's giving you this platform, then it's like taking it away. And you're right. And it's the same with all the sex workers. I'm also shadow banned on Twitter, on Instagram, and my stuff is so tame. Um, So I feel, I feel your pain Um, along the lines of social media. um, You know, you obviously are somebody like we've said, you put yourself out there and um, you definitely have this no fucks given attitude. I mean, the shirt that you're wearing right now says fuck it. Um, <laughs> so how do you handle like the negative feedback on social media, like the trolls and stuff like that? Because the other, you know, one of the ma- major negative aspects that I see is the fact that it does give, on one hand, it's a positive and a negative. It gives everyone a voice, right? It gives everyone a place to to, to say what they want to say, but then it's also a bad thing because some people just go on and just like to like, you know, attack sex workers and just spread negativity and just be really abusive. So I'm sure that you've seen that. Um, how do you handle that? Because I know that a lot of like younger performers coming into the industry, like it really affects them very deeply. Oh God. And you know, that, that's one thing that really affects me actually. I'm, you know, not particularly to myself, because, you know, the funny thing is, is I'm very, very critical of myself anyway. So I kind of, from a very young age, I kind of built up this, I would say a wall around my heart, really. Um, And it's like, right, nobody can hurt me because I know how critical I am of myself. And the fact that I keep driving, driving, driving until I want to get kind of, I would say, that effect of myself you know and how where I want to be and all of that so for me I found it um whenever anybody says anything negative don't get me wrong it plays on my mind and the funny thing is is 
you kind of, and I don't know if you find it too, but I can have hundreds of positive and that one negative thing comes in and it's like, it's ruined my day. That, that is. Yeah. It's, that's day. so human. Oh my God. Same for everybody. Why? Like, come on, you've had like a hundred positives, you know? And, and that's the thing. And I think, what I find is nowadays is is we're very hard on ourselves, very, very hard on ourselves. It can be, you know, some something, I, and I think as well, because a lot of, there is a lot of pressure online to kind of look a certain way, to act a certain way, to kind of conform to what governments want or what people like want you to be. Nah, stuff that bullshit. No, I, I'm going to be exactly who I want to be. And luckily, because I've kind of, like I said, I built this wall around my heart. And, and the thing is, is then although that negativity will come in, but instead of me writing something negative back, I'm like, right, it could be that this person here, they wrote something like that, but they may be feeling insecure. You don't know what's happened to them at home. You don't know what's going on in their lives, you know? And I always find, right, how can I turn this around? So they may have wrote something um, negative. Now, I can either decide to write something negative back uh, and I don't need that negativity no, no 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 I don't need anything like that so what I do is I either write something back positive I go yeah I really understand I, if you're feeling that way but look at it from this point of view so what I try and do is actually write something back positive and usually that changes them around and they go look they either take the comment away or they go I'm really really sorry or I get a little dm going oh I'm really really sorry you know I shouldn't have put that and it's it's cool it's cool you know it, it's totally fine like I have my own opinions as well which is which is a great thing this is what it's all about we all, we all have different outlooks of of different um things on the internet or what we see out there and this is the whole thing about being human and unique and and that's a great thing but to put something negative out there for one I just don't understand it I just don't um so what I try and do is I try and change it around or if they carry on you just go all right block <laughs> um and, and, yeah. and then it's done and it and what I find is then right Okay, so then I sit there and I go, right, you've blocked them now. Now they can't contact you or write anything else. So that's got to be out of your mind now. You're done with that. Because like I said, otherwise it's there. And then I don't sleep well anyway. So then I won't be able to sleep. And then it'll be, you know, then you think, oh, yeah, maybe they're right, actually. Maybe. And then it played. And I thought, no. So one thing that I've done differently to when I when I first uh, was on Twitter, which was now, now about four years ago, um, is the fact it used to really play on my mind. But now I'm like, no, no, you've got them now. Get rid of that. But one thing I really don't like, like you said before, is young people either coming into the porn industry or the sex industry it's a very difficult place anyway. Um, you know, you're always kind of, I even found coming, um, even though I've been in, in the sex industry, God, since really I was about 14. Um, and but I started kind of in massage parlors and that when I was 16. So I've been, I'm, 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 in, I'm 33 now. So I've been in the sex industry for a very long time. However, only doing porn for coming up to four years next year. Um, but even it was a shock for me how many kind of people are out there to kind of, let's say, do you over or, um, you know, to get something out of you, whether it's your body, whether it's money, um, you know, usually it was, you know, to have a free shag, you know, cameramen to have a free shag. So I tell you what, models have got that pressure anyway. Um, coming into the industry then you've got like you said the added pressure from like people online giving negativity and you're like oh my god so do you know what I can only imagine because when I first came into the industry there was I was literally in massage parlors and then I went on to adult work which is obviously a big big thing over in the UK um for getting I'm um, paying for sex 
So um, I only really use that. And then obviously I've just been on Twitter for really a short amount of time, which is nearly four years um, compared to how long I've been in the sex industry. So I can only imagine, and because it's a bit later on in my life and I'm not in my teens, I can only imagine how it would affect some younger models coming in. Um, it's a really difficult place. And like I was saying before, there is a lot of negativity online. And I know models are re really struggle within themselves. Um, you know, there's that pressure of how you look. Um, you know, and with that comes eating disorders, mental disorders, um, you know, and I've suffered myself with both. Um, again, it's that pressure, that pressure of being a model and you've got all that. And as well, then social media online, trying to make sure that your fan sites work you know trying to make sure that you're pleasing everyone so I'm a very much of a pleaser so I do understand and I always say the models and this is why also I love working with younger models because not only do I like to give um, anyone advice but I think there needs to be a lot more support out there and I don't know if you notice as well Holly but the thing is there is a lot of um I've noticed particularly uh, between women as well, um, there's a lot of kind of bitchiness um, and that needs to stop. <laughs> you know, we're, we're all here for a reason and that is, you know, to have great sex online, which is bloody awesome, but also to make money. You know, that's what OnlyFans yeah. is for. That's what escorting is for. It's like, yeah, let's have some fucking great sex, but let's make a bit of dough. <laughs> so um, let's make a bit of cash. But instead of like being bitchy going, oh, she looks horrible, or, or, you know, he doesn't look nice, or they don't look nice, let's stop all that. Let's, let's really support each other. And I think also this is where, the, this is why that the sex industry doesn't and and people who um you know uh, who sell their bodies for sex including myself this is why this doesn't need to be pushed underground and i know in the uk things are getting a lot tighter over here but that needs to like stop because we need that support there we need to we need places that we can go to feel safe as a sex worker so it's very very yeah you know we've got so much pressure as models um <clears throat> On people in the sex industry I think, anyway without added pressure online yeah i think you i mean there's so much to unpack in, in what you just said um there's a lot of lessons to be taken away i think that you know first of all your your insight into recognizing that when somebody says something negative to you it says a lot more about them than it does about you yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people are very, very unhappy and they project that, that unhappiness onto other people, right? Because they don't know how to handle their issues. They don't know how to process things. And so other people become the victims of, you know, that personal internal battle that they're having. Um, and then you also talked about, yeah. And then you also talked about, you know, that this really is a place where, you know, we're here to make money and we're here to promote ourselves. So, trying to extricate yourself from making social media like your real life. And I think the big, the big problem is, is that it's on our phones and we're always looking at it. So we become very involved in social media and, and it, we think like, you know, and I see girls tweet this sometimes and it's so true. Like social media is not real life. Like it is a place to express yourself. It is a place to communicate. It is a place to promote your products and, and it's great in all of those senses, but it isn't real life. And, um, also the comparison, uh, to your other people, uh, that's, I mean, I think that's something that's just natural, um, to human beings. It's like our lizard brain thing. You know, we're always striving to be the best because we want to be the top of the food chain and we want to survive and, and that kind of thing. So these are all like natural things that I think human beings do, but social media definitely, and technology has accelerated that so much in that it's always in our face. All that media and that information is hitting us constantly. And it's so hard to step back from it and like, yeah, like you know, recognize that this is not, like I just said, that's not real life. Like there's, <laughs> there's so much more to life than like likes on Instagram, but that's such a, it's easier said than done. I struggle with it as well. Um, all right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break and then we're going to be back 
So hang tight. Today's episode is brought to you by Zencaster. Everybody knows that the pandemic changed everything. For me, it really changed how I do podcasting. Before, I used to insist that all episodes were recorded in my studio, but obviously during the quarantine, that wasn't possible. This is where Zencaster came in. It allowed me to record remotely with my guests in the highest quality possible. If you want to get into podcasting, forget Zoom. That is not the way to go. You definitely want to try Zencaster. If you go to Zencaster.com and use promo code Holly, you will get the first three months for 30% off. That's Zencaster.com and use promo code Holly to take advantage of this incredible offer today. Hey guys, we're back. So, uh, Sophie, you have mentioned previously that you are pansexual. This is kind of a new term that's come up. Um, I only started hearing it a few years ago, and I think that some of my listeners may not understand what it actually means. So can you explain what being pansexual means to you? Of course, yeah. And I'm really, I can, I can really, um, you know, I can only say what it really means to me um, because I... Myself, I, I don't particularly like labels. However, however, pansexual is one of the things that makes me me. And I love being, I love being pansexual. I know to me, basically, it doesn't matter what gender, what race, um, you know, whoever someone is, for me, it's a connection it's a connection and you know what it doesn't matter um who they are you know when you meet someone and you're like wow you're amazing lot like, and i've i've dated um all different genders all different races and i was only saying the other day myself and um damien we went and saw a wonderful wonderful trans woman who we've seen before and i was talking to her and i was saying you know what the fact that i've dated i've dated trans women trans men men women um so for me it's about being it's, and, and, and seeing people and it doesn't matter who they are you know, um, they don't have to feel like there's any kind of problem with who they are. You know, the fact is, is, is I, ju- I just love in- having connections with everyone. And for me, it, it really doesn't matter, um, you know, how they, um, you know, how they, how they, are as in it matters to me how they are as a person rather than what's on the outside so for me it's like oh, I fucking I find that little bit of horniness in literally I'll meet someone I'll be like oh my god there's something about you isn't there there's something about you <laughs> so that's what really matters to me is having that connection with someone I'll be like yeah let's let's get in that bedroom right now babe you know <laughs> so and it is funny me and um me and Damien and um and this one Luna her name was we met her the other day and she was like she was like oh my god that's amazing you know um and we had a real great connection with her and and that's the thing it doesn't it just doesn't matter so for me being pansexual is um and I'll say it again being pansexual is absolutely awesome like I said it doesn't matter what gender what race um how you identify as it just matters what the connection is. So <laughs> that's exactly That's it. kind of like, it's one of those labels that's not a label. <laughs> that's just, you, got it. you know what I mean? <laughs> that's it, babe. That's exactly it. Yeah. And do you know, the funny thing is I've always been like that, even from like secondary school. So like secondary school, probably high school for you guys is like, it must be not when I was around about 14 when, there was like Facebook. So first got on like Facebook then. Um, I know old school babe. Um, <laughs> um and there was like Hey, yeah. there wasn't Facebook when I was in high school. So <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'm older than you. <laughs> So, so I was using like MSN Messenger, um, and there, what else was there? Um, 
when I was back at school. But I was basically talking to, even back then, it's like all different genders. I go and meet people when I was like 14. I met this like wonderful, wonderful trans woman then. Um, so I've always, always been very open, even from when I was like really young. Um, so it's it's just one of those things for me that it's never mattered. Like as long as as long as I have that kind of like you know that that little thing and I and I do find that that everybody it doesn't matter who you are, who you are as you get older you have that little thing about you and you know, that little bit of horniness and I always find it and I'm like oh my god will you just come to bed me right now you know <laughs> so um so I I find it with everyone and someone went to me the other day yeah but I just you know I feel like. There's, there's a lot of, especially a lot of guys online who I find are very lonely, who I Skype with, and they go, yeah, but I'm really ugly, or, you know, or this this was a guy the other day, he said, look, I'm disabled, and, you know, I've never been with a woman, I'm ugly, I'm disabled, and I was like, and because he, he was in a wheelchair, and basically he had both his legs um amputated, and he was like, no one's ever going to love me, I said, no, I know, no, you just hold on, and, and I was like, and I, and I felt, we have that connection and it's nothing to do with like anything else but that horniness and he was there and he was like afterwards he said you just make me feel so good so I'm gonna go we're gonna go and meet up with him and have a great time and you know what and he's still a virgin and that's awesome and you know what why not why not is and Mm -hmm. like I said it doesn't matter who to me it doesn't matter it does not matter. I think we should all be a bit more, a bit more open and not worry, not worry. But you know, for for someone like that, he was so wonderful, and and I just his face was like, you know, no one loves me, no one would want to have sex with me or anything like that. I said, how can you see all like that? I said, because I do. I do, and he was like, "This is this is absolutely brilliant." Like you know, uh, you make me feel good, and that is what it's all about. That and that's why we need to show love and support to absolutely everyone, not not just people out there who, who you know particularly look good or or models on the TV. It's nothing to do with that. It's finding that little bit of horniness in someone and and sharing that and supporting each other, and it just you know not yeah. Just, it doesn't I mean, you make you make such a great case for, you know, the importance of sex workers. And I've spoken to a lot of like full service providers before who who talk about and I actually have a member of my Patreon as well who's disabled. And, you know, he talked about how important it is for him to be able to frequent sex workers because he is disabled. So he has a really hard time meeting somebody, you know, and it's so easy for you know, the regular people of the world who aren't disabled, who are, you know, don't have a problem really finding a mate who, you know, have always been able to date with ease to say, oh, well, you know, you shouldn't be hiring sex workers. Go find a real woman, you know, go have a real relationship. Well, that's not easy, that easy for people, you know, and that's where sex workers come in. And like, that's where there's so much value because there is a real like therapy to what you do. And it's so easy for people who've never had a problem, who aren't, you know, still virgins at whatever age, who, who, who haven't been able to be with a woman. It's so easy for people to judge and just say, find yourself a real relationship, find yourself a real woman. That is not an option for everybody. No, it's, that is exactly it. That is exactly it. And this is exactly why, you know, like you said, it is service. It's one of, it's one of the oldest professions. And, and like you said, it's, Maybe, and maybe, do you know what? And maybe not everybody wants to be in a relationship. Maybe people just want to go out and fuck or, or order, you know, someone online and go, do you know what? You this this is what I want. I just want to fuck this person. They come, they get paid, and then go. And and that's all somebody yeah. wants, you know. At the end of the day, I've paid for sex. Um, you know, when I especially when I was living in Bristol as well. Now, for me, I 
I I absolutely adore, I love the trans community. And but I tell you what, for a woman, and I will be honest with you, it's a lot easier for men to um see trans women. So so for instance, in Bristol, I paid for sex. So so the thing is, is if I wanted to um to go and see a trans woman, some sometimes I just wanted to do that. I'd finish work. So so I obviously me working in the sex industry, I was paid for sex, but sometimes I wanted a little something different. So I go and pay for sex. So I probably so a lot of the time I just finish up from from my job, um, seeing my clients, and I go, do you know what? It's a Friday night, and I fancy going to see a trans woman. Now the thing, being a woman, not all trans women will see women, um, because um, and it's a lot harder for me. It isn't like a, so a thing that we use over here, and I don't know if it's the same for in America, but we have something called fab swingers. Uh, where it's basically a site online where you log in and there'll be like um trans women on there, women, couples, where you could just go and have sex. Um, so I'd be I'd be on there and I'd be messaging um you know women or trans women or couples. Now it's very easy for me to go on there and there's horny guys, but if I particularly wanted to um you know see a woman or um a trans woman particularly it's very difficult for me so then I go on to adult work and I'll be like right do you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna pay I'm gonna pay and there's no problem in that there's no it's like at all paying yeah. it's like if you're a chef at a four-star restaurant that doesn't mean that you don't ever want to eat at another restaurant yes. <laughs> and have somebody else cook for you right I mean you got it <laughs> So you've mentioned Damien a couple of times. Um, yeah, I know that's your yeah. boyfriend. So tell me a little bit about um, your relationship. How does that work? Um, obviously, it's got to be open in some way. And have you found dating difficult considering your career? <laughs> oh, right. right. I am so glad you brought this up because literally, so so I've I've got my beautiful, beautiful son. He's going to be 15. Oh, my goodness. 15 this Saturday. Now, there is one thing. Um, I never wanted to get involved with anyone. So one thing when he was born, I split up from uh, his dad. His dad wasn't right for me. Um, so he split up literally three months after he was born. And I had never been with anyone literally until I met Damien um, in February this year. Um, so literally I had, um, you know, I was, I was just shagging around to be fair, <laughs> to be fair. I was, I was doing, doing my escorting, but also I was on, like I said, I was on fab swingers. I was going to swinging parties. Um, you know, at the end of the day, as long as my son was getting taken care of and I made sure I was bringing the money in and, you know, he's safe and he's happy, then literally my thing has always been sex. Like if you call it a hobby, if you call it anything, I was like, I'm not interested in dating anyone, you know. <laughs> I'm like, no, you're all right, love. No. <laughs> um, so literally, like 14 years, I was like, no, I'm I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. And um, and obviously the most important um person in my life is my boy. Um, you know, um, and and that was the thing, and then suddenly <laughs> So and I wouldn't expect now. I was literally what I'd what decided was I love I love Portugal, and um, what I actually decided was I'm literally gonna move to Portugal in the end. I'm gonna have a little place in Miami, a little place in Portugal. Gonna save all my money and literally be a cat woman and live there and literally just keep shagging around <laughs> for the rest of my life until February came. So one of my beautiful, beautiful trans women friends, um, Kate, so she she contacted me. She said, right, I've got these two guys. She, and I was like, right, okay, yeah. So I'm just, um, that's absolutely fine, cool. Um, because I'm quite cold. You see, when I'm when I go on a porn set, I'm like literally, my heart is like set in ice stone, like walls around it, you know. So I was like, nah. 
I'm going to go on the porn set. I'm going to suck these dicks and destroy them. And I'm like, fuck yeah. <laughs> In and out, you know, fucking go as they say. So, so I was like, yeah, I'll suck you what I'm going to do. So I get there and everything. There's these two guys there, Damien and uh and nick i was like oh, hi all right yeah i'm just gonna go up and get change as i normally am you know so getting there thought nothing i thought like, yeah he's, they're fit yeah yeah it's all cool have our dicks in a minute it's all cool um so and that was my main thing just get in there get the cock get it in my ass you know have a bit of a spray around get piss everywhere i was like yeah that's what i normally do <laughs> get it all out <laughs> you know so we do this first scene. I thought, oh, he's a pretty, pretty good shagger. Yeah. Yeah, he's all right. So, um, so yeah, but um, the thing was, is Kate really fancies him as well. I thought, well, yeah, he's all right. Anyway, we then had to do this custom video for, for one of my fans on my OnlyFans site. And, um, and Damien was like, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it with you. Because I was like, Nick or Damien, I said, do you want, could you just do this custom with me? Because I was paying for the cameraman anyway and um, and the venue and that. So I thought, um, yeah. So I thought, well, you could do this custom for me. So I was <laughs> being, you know, being in charge and in control and all that, you know. Um. So so anyway, so, so Damien said, yeah, I'll do it. So I thought, all right, here we go. So um, we start doing this custom. I'm dressed in full latex. Anyway, suddenly um, we're do we're doing our thing, and suddenly he kisses. Oh, no, he's led down. Sorry, I'm on top, and I start kissing him. And I thought, hmm, there's something a little bit different here. And I we like look in each other's eyes, and like we're kissing, and and um, then he's like, and then I was riding him. He's like, stop, stop! I'm gonna come, I'm gonna come. I was like, oh my god, really? I'm please just give me a cream pie and all that so like, like give me that love juice inside me i really want it now <laughs> um so um so yeah so so i'm riding him on top he's like i'm gonna come like fucking hell oh my god this is like this dick feels so good because usually being honest with you when i'm riding dick when i've got dick inside me, it's like yeah it's more of an action or when i'm kissing someone it's like so set like sensual but i don't really feel anything i'm just like yeah it's like fucking hot but it's not not like how i was feeling at that time with damien i thought mm -mm, oh shit so anyway so we all so then my friend kate um, she's beautiful. I love her so much. I haven't been in touch with her for a while, but um, she's a beautiful trans woman. And so she was like, she was like, oh, I really fancy Damien. So there is a bit of like drama there as well, babe. So literally, then Damien is in in bed with her that night, and I thought, fucking get it on, because I'm not jealous like that. You see, I'm like, fucking get it on, babe. I was like, babe, so I got, I got, I'm gonna have to go upstairs anyway. I got work to do. You carry on. So so like on that night time yeah a bit of pizza and that had a bit of a chat and then and they got it on and the night time was like fucking hell yeah do it do it because I, I like fucking love it I'm, I'm upstairs getting fucking horny do you know what I mean <laughs> um so and the, but then on the night time I was like do you know what I really hope he comes upstairs and we can have a we can finish off I just want to see if this is something real or not because I was already having those like feelings there I was like what the fuck is this and I part of me was like I don't like this because I have not felt this before. I was like, what the fuck is, I'm mm. like, no, 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 okay. So anyway, the next day he gave me his number and everything. And I was like, I was like, okay, how do I play this? Because I've never really, I've, you know, I've been taken out on like escort meets, I've been out with guys and girls, you know, on dates and all that, but it's never really gone any further. So like, how the fuck do you play this? Is like, do 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 I message straight away or do I play it cool? I mean, what do I do anyway? Of course, I message straight away. So, <laughs> so when he was going back on the train, going back to London, I was like, oh, you know, hi babe, you know, it's so good to see you and everything. And I thought, fuck. So literally a week later, so I said to Kate, I said, look, I'm really having feelings for Damon, but she was like totally cool. She was like, look, he's just another, he's just another cock anyway. And I was like. Okay, yeah, cool. We're so like that. I was like, yeah, high five, girl, you know. <laughs> so she's like, on to the next one. I was like, all right, babe. Oh, so that was absolutely fine. Thanks fuck for that. So anyway, we then met up on this on this boat. 
and uh anyway we had a great time on there and um and it was funny so his his mate his um wonderful gay friend uh michael he said right don't shag her don't shag her because you know she'll think it's just a sex thing and and you want more and uh, anyway, of course, as soon as he got on the fucking boat, I was like, come here. <laughs> yes, let's fucking do it. <laughs> so so that, that didn't fucking work out for him, did it? So because like, <laughs> and, and the thing is, is luckily what I found as well is, is the fact that someone asked me, um, and it was quite at the start of our relationship, what's more important to you, love or sex? Now, I answer sex straight away. And I tell you why, because it is the most important thing for, for me. And I realise it's the most important thing. Sorry, I keep looking at the door because I know he's out there on the bed. I'm like, oh, yeah, sorry. This is going to be me after. Yes. <laughs> Crawling onto him. Um, no, so I... um. And it is, and and she's exactly the same. Like if we didn't, we were even talking about this today, um, because one of our friends, um, basically he's really struggling because his wife is older and he isn't getting sex at the moment, and we're like, fucking hell, we are so lucky. Like we found each other, and the thing is, it's very, it, it's the most important thing. I would say it's sex and love for us and may, some people may see that's wrong but um that's just how it is and the thing is as well is we're both very open so um so there's a lot of things I've had to learn in a relationship like fucking hell like I didn't compromise oh my god I was a babe oh my god Holly I'm <laughs> literally just gonna say that I'm like what the yeah, fuck? I'm that's like, hard. you know what? I realized how, how basically, how maybe selfish I was before. Like, as in, like, I did, like, obviously, my son is like, let's say, like, the sign, the shining sun in my life, you know, he's my heart and everything. Mm. But then I realized I've got this other person um, come in, and it's like, I mean, sometimes, like, um no I don't fucking agree with that you fucking what you know <laughs> and and yeah. I'm actually I'm like wow you've now then got to think of that other person feelings about their opinions about then them thinking right how do I take what this person is saying to me and I because I'm very Larry um like literally I can I I I, I sometimes I get like I wouldn't ever, obviously never, I'm not like violent or anything like that. But I'm like, I realised that actually um, in myself, I'd be like, why the fuck would you do that? You know? And and that's what happens in relationships, isn't it? It's like, wow, you're two different people. And, you know, it, and actually, again, that doesn't matter what gender you are, but you're two different people in a relationship. You're not always going to see eye to eye. You're not always going to have that same view of something. So that's a lot to learn for me because I'm like, I was so set in my ways. Like, like really, I go and shag and then I'm gone. See you later, mate. You know, I, I'm not giving a fuck if I don't see you again. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. yeah, as long as I get, like, my sexual needs and I've pleased you, then it isn't them thinking about kind of any kind of feelings or emotions or, you know, oh, look at that person's side of you. Um, so it's been... Yeah, no, relationships... Point. Yeah, relationships... Yeah, relationships are hard, but, I mean, it sounds like you guys are, are working it out. Um, and, and speaking of... The good thing is, but, is, like, from a sex point of view is the fact that we're both in the sex industry we both love to fuck and we love to fuck other people and it works for us there's nothing to do with love like when we when we make love and when we're in the bedroom together when we don't film that is something else like sometimes i wake him up at like 3 a.m i'm like hey babe can i just ride your dick <laughs> and and that's a totally different experience you know to like fucking on film but then but then we've got this uh, this like whole what i didn't realize is is that damien's exactly the same as me and like we were like at the same time well like like we said like i said before i love to go and see beautiful trans women and he was doing exactly the same so it's something that we share in our personal life and we go together we go to swingers clubs together we literally just went to a one on the weekend a halloween one and 
you know, now I found someone who has a high sex drive like I do, but it's doing all the things that I do sexually because it is a massive part of my life. In fact, it's probably um like it's probably the biggest thing in my life, obviously, apart from my son and family, um, is the fact that it's it's now being shared with someone who I am totally in love with. So I'm very, very lucky, very lucky. Yeah, that's so lucky because most people, you know, if they have that love compatibility, they don't have the sexual compatibility. Um, and that's, yeah. you know, often like a huge problem for relationships. You've mentioned your son a couple of times. Yeah. And, um, you know, I love to talk to other sex workers who are mothers um, love. because I think it's something that a lot of people don't talk about. And it's something yeah. that a lot of women struggle with, you know, trying to be being a sex worker and being, you know, a, a mother as well. And society often um, can't imagine that the two could coexist. And so whenever I have somebody on who's willing to talk about their experience on that subject, I just right. think it's a really valuable um, insight. So how has that been for you? Um, I would assume your son knows what you do for a living. How did you tell him that? What's your relationship like? Like all that. Wow. That's, that's so great. And, and, you know, that, that's the thing as well is it has been hard. I'm not going to say that it's been easy for my boy because one of who I am, like, I must admit, like, my kind of, uh, the mental side of things, um, you know, I'm very manic as well. Uh, like I said to you before, sometimes I don't sleep and all of that type of thing. So, um, yeah, I'm very, very manic. So he has to kind of like, you know, my moods can be very, I suffer from bipolar, all of that. So he has that. Um, the thing is as well, what we, what we also take into account is, as you can see, I love surgery, um, and I'm going to keep getting things done. I like feeling good about myself. Um, so it has been very hard for him, um, especially being a boy as well. I, I think in particular, because in a way he wants to protect me. Like, like I said before, Damien came along, I didn't have a man around. Um, you know, he's, he's kind of felt that he's had to kind of stand up for me in some ways. There's been times that we've been out at the shops, there'll be kind of like men looking at me in a certain way, or I get called like a slut or a slag from people when I'm out, um, and he's had to take that all in, um, and as well, when, so when I first told him about being in the, uh, being in the sex industry, once when he was just starting secondary school, um, so he was only about 11, um, and we, I sat him down and said, you know, yeah, this is what I do, this is what brings the money in, um, because for him as well is, I think it's very important, um, for, for children to know, and, and my dad did this with, with me as well, uh, but my dad was in the building trade, um, but it's, I think it's very important to know the value of money, um, and, and the fact is I work hard, uh, and you know, it hasn't been easy. Um, the good thing is, is I've, I've always been there for my son, but there is a downside. There is a downside. And this is because of other people's judgment. So he has had to move schools. Um, he was at a secondary school, but he started getting picked on uh because they they found certain things online um and it was then to do with the mothers as well um they particularly said things in front of the children um to them basically so then uh, my son was then picked on so i never went up the school um so this was a real downside actually uh to this is the fact that I couldn't ever go up the school because I was always, and I still don't now. So my son would never be seen with me at school. I've missed things like I won't be able to, he's got a rugby match this Thursday. I won't be able to go to that. He doesn't have his friends over. Uh, so there is a downside. 
And I tell you what, that isn't because of anything else but judgment from people on the outside. You know, I've been called into school. Uh, I've also had, I don't know what it's called over there, but social services. Uh, social services have yeah, been we call called. It yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, and they've got, no, I tell you what, I will be honest with you, they've been great. All they care about is to make sure he's okay. That I've never had anyone at home which I haven't, I never had clients or I never bought anything about back here apart from actually Damien is the first guy apart from my dad who's ever been in my son's life um so you know I'm very very protective of him and the social services could see that but um let's say um my son's dad uh you know yeah he wasn't very supportive he isn't really in his life now um but you know I've had a lot of trouble from him because of what I do for a living although I'm providing for his son so it it has it has been difficult you get judgment from mothers especially um so in that way it's been very difficult but you know what it's made myself and my son's um bond even stronger um uh, you know, this year, like since he's turned fourteen, it has been a little bit, been a little bit more difficult. Um, he's answering back a bit too much now. <laughs> um, so I'm like, excuse me, where's my little boy gone? Where's there was the cuteness gone? You know, no, but literally, he's being more responsible, and you know, I I think it's made him a lot stronger as a person. One thing that he's seen is the fact that. You know, you have to be very kind of streetwise, right? Um, the fact is that life isn't a you know a kind of box of roses. It's it's literally you know sometimes you're on the breadline. Sometimes you've got to do what you've got to do. You know, and although I, I absolutely love it, I know there's a lot of women or, or men or trans women, trans men who don't particularly want to escort, who don't particularly want to be in the sex industry, but they feel they've got to do it because of the money. And that must be very difficult. That must be very difficult. Um, you don't you don't feel that way. You enjoy doing what you do. Oh, yeah, I, I do. I really do. <laughs> However, I will say there have been times I haven't. And I tell you was when is I can remember when I first came on to adult work and I was I didn't show my face or anything like that. And I tell you what, that was harder. And I tell you why, because I had a lot of blackmail. I had a lot of blackmail. I had a lot more judgment. Um, at that, that at that time, I didn't actually, um, you know, put myself out there at all. It was literally, I made the decision when I was 29 to go into porn and I've never looked back. Um, it so when you say you got a lot of, you said, when you say you got a lot of blackmail, you mean that like, because you were hiding your identity and protecting your identity, people were threatening yeah. to expose you and yes. holding that against you. But once you decided to go into porn and you went all out there, cause it's like when your secret, when your secrets are out there, then people, they lose their power over you. Yes, that's exactly it. And, and the truth of it is if, if anyone out there is, you know, a lot of times I, and this is another reason I do not want the sex industry or, or sex workers. I do not want anything going underground because there's a lot of pressure on us as it is. We don't think we can go to the police. We don't think we have support there. Now, I'm telling you, if anything, we need we need more support, <laughs> like for blackmail, for being mugged, for being abused as sex workers. We need a lot more support rather than anything. Because at the time, the thing was, it drove me to, to depression, um like serious depression where i tried to commit suicide a couple of times you know even how much love and t the total lot of my life that my son is it still made me feel that way and that was because of um being blackmailed and um and i didn't think there was anyone out there that i could turn to um uh, there are support groups out there but when you're when you're there on your own as like a single mum you're like 
do you know what? Maybe there isn't any other life for me. Maybe there's no way out. And, um, you know, the type of clients at the time that I was seeing were abusers because they thought they could. Um, and then mm. blackmail, like I said, and, and kind of like there was one time that I was tied up and, and, and beaten up and then mugged. Um, and, and the cleaner found me in the morning. This, and I was in a travel lodge hotel you know, there was all of that. And that was the clientele I was kind of seeing then, you know, I was very, um, I, I was more in the cheaper bracket, um, because I didn't think I was worth much. I, and that's the truth. At the mm-hmm. time I thought, you know, I've, I've, I've always had a struggle in myself with kind of feeling worthless and not good enough for anyone. And, and I tell you what, the thing that, that Damien has done for me is the fact that he's made me feel not so much like that. And I know that sounds very strange coming from me, but, and and that's why I try and show, again, my videos online is sometimes, sometimes I do feel a bit like insecure. I do feel a bit worthless and that's okay. That's okay, but we just yeah. need to change that around. Or you have something in your life that is very positive for you. So, um, so go just going back to my son, it it hasn't been easy for him, and and it's not gonna be. Um, the fact that again, I haven't been able to go to parents' evenings, you know. Uh, but like when when me and my son were living in Bristol, my dad would go. Um, it's not something that I could go to because again, of judge. So it's been a lot about judgment. It's been a lot about how people and uh, people look at sex workers, look at people in the porn industry about the way I look. Um, so it hasn't been easy for my boy, and and I have to big him up in that way because he is he's he's beautiful and he's growing up to be a, the most wonderful man. Uh, like I said, he's fifteen this Saturday, and um, you know, like you said, he's he's been through a lot. He hasn't had a father figure there as well, and I know that that must have been difficult for him. So I've kind of had to play the mum and the dad. Um, so, but do you know what? Big up to him because he, he's done really well and he's just starting his GCSEs and, and mentally we keep, keep each other going and I know he certainly has. So yeah, he's, he's definitely, he's a lot of my life and, and I must say as well is, um, and of course I've now, I've now got Damien, I've now got two beautiful daughters as well um who are nine and ten um who are Damien's children but they're mine (laughs) so I've now got two beautiful daughters and I'm very very lucky so now so now we've got our little family together um so I've got three children now uh, which is absolutely great so I'm very 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 lucky very lucky and so I've got my kind of like a ready-made family as well and um I love them to bits and I treat them as my own um but again and and the thing is as well they they don't judge me you know of the way I look or or anything and you know they love their dad and I can really tell that they love me now and they look to me as a mum and you know we have our family time um but all three of them know that Mum and Dad have got to go out to work. And do you know what? We're proud. We're me and Damien are proud of what we do for a living. Um, you know, and like we like like I said, um, we're we we've now got our YouTube channel, which is the fucking explorers. Um, and we just started that up um last Tuesday. Um, so where we basically go on all different explorations. Um, it could be abandoned buildings, ghostly buildings. Our first adventure has been into a cave. And so we want, but in all these places, we keep true to who we are and we fucking all of them. So, so basically we have the YouTube <laughs> channel as our mainstream. And then we basically use, and we're going to, we're just setting up a fucking Explorers Only fans. So they're mashing together. So our, both our thing uh, both me and Damien, and exactly what the cop destroyers were doing, is the fact that we are striving and we are, uh, let's say, ambassadors of the porn and the sex industry because going into mainstream, because 
why can't we do that? Why can't people in porn and the sex industry, you know, do mainstream, let's say singing, acting, or, or anything at all, be on mainstream TV, be on a soap, do exactly what we want to do. Um, so this is very, very important to well, us. Then again, with the Clock Destroyers movement, we're just carrying that on as a couple. And now we're called the Sinners. So it's Mr. and Mrs. Sins. <laughs> I mean, that's what's so great about the way that how we consume media has changed and evolved so much. Because, you know, before YouTube existed, you couldn't watch content of you and Damien you know, doing whatever you do, unless you, someone bought you a show and you were on, you know, channel three or whatever it might be. And now all of these, these internet based streaming platforms have allowed content creators to really put themselves out there. And I think that that trend will just continue. You know, I think that the, I mean, especially when you start looking the future, like with blockchain and crypto, like the, you know, everything is going to be decentralized and, you know, the, these places where, you know, they're ruled by corporations, these social media platforms, um, bro- TV broadcast, whatever, I think that's all going to change. And so I think people like you and Damien will just continue to have more and more opportunities to create your own content and put yourself out there in your most authentic way possible and continue yeah. on your amazing success. So Sophie, thank you so much for coming on. It's been such a pleasure to have you. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Holly. Thank you. <laughs> can you tell everybody where they can find you online, um, your social media platforms, anything else you want to plug? Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so yes. So we've just brought out our brand new show, myself and Mr. Damien Oliver. Oh, we just brought out our brand new show, The Sucking Explorers. That's S- X-X-K-I-N-G and Explorers on YouTube. Um, then we've got Sophie Aisler on Twitter. We've got at Damien Oliver XXX on Twitter. Um, we've got Sophie A Superstar on Instagram and Damien Oliver Official on Instagram. Um, and then for our clothing, we've got bucketxxx.com. Woo! <laughs> Wow, that's a lot of uh, different um, websites. Sounds like you guys are really like (laughs) pushing your media and your product out there. That's so great. Thank you, my God. And you guys... And you guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Holly Randall. Of course, if you want to support this podcast, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall unfiltered. And it's been such a pleasure to have you, Sophie. It's been such a pleasure to be back podcasting back to work. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Today's episode is brought to you by Zencaster. Everybody knows that the pandemic changed everything. For me, it really changed how I do podcasting. Before, I used to insist that all episodes were recorded in my studio, but obviously during the quarantine, that wasn't possible. This is where Zencaster came in. It allowed me to record remotely with my guests in the highest quality possible. If you want to get into podcasting, forget Zoom. That is not the way to go. You definitely want to try Zencaster. If you go to Zencaster.com and use promo code Holly, you will get the first three months for 30% off. That's Zencaster.com and use promo code Holly to take advantage of this incredible offer today.